Welcome to our review on isotopes. So the first thing we're going to look at is something that you've seen throughout your science lives, but probably haven't really paid much attention to. And that's one of those little boxes that you see on the periodic table. Now, what we actually have there is a lot of information about any given element. So I've broken it down for you into the four key sections that you need to know. So what we find is we've got two numbers in that box. One is always larger than the other. So the larger of the two numbers is always the mass number. In this case, 204.4 at the bottom there. The smaller of the two numbers is the atomic number. You then also have two bits of information about naming our element. So we have the symbol, which is one, two or three letters long. And then we actually have the full name. And in your chemistry exam, you'll obviously get a periodic table as part of your data sheet. So you don't have to memorize anything from it. You just need to know how to use it. And bear in mind that OCR are really quite nice to you. And you don't have to remember which is the atomic number or mass number because the periodic table has a key on it. So always look carefully at the information they provide for you. So we have a few key terms we need to know. First one, one we've already mentioned so far in this video, is the atomic number. Now, the atomic number just tells you how many protons there are or how many electrons, because as we know, the number of protons is the same as the number of electrons. So if ever you're asked to write down the number of electrons or protons, just write down the atomic number. Second, the mass number. This is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Then we come on to two terms we've not mentioned. The first one is an isotope. Now, what we actually find is that elements actually exist in a range of different isotopes. So they have the same number of protons and electrons, but they have a different number of neutrons present. So you've got different isotopes of carbon, for example. You've got carbon-12, carbon-13 and carbon-14. They've all got the same number of protons and electrons, but they've got a different number of neutrons each, hence the different mass numbers. So what we find in any isotope, the atomic number is always the same, but the mass number is different because the protons and electrons are the same, but the neutrons is different. The last term on there is one we're going to use an awful lot throughout the remainder of our chemistry course, which is the word ion. Now, ions quite simply are charged particles. So an old favourite of OCR is getting you to work out the number of neutrons present. They could also ask you how many protons and electrons are present in any particular element. So in order to do this, if we were asked to work out the number of protons or electrons that are present in any element at all, all you do is you look at your periodic table, which is in your data sheet, you find that element, and then you have a look at the atomic number and write it down. That's literally it. If they ask you to work out the number of neutrons, then again, you get your periodic table, you find the element, you find the mass number, and then you take away the atomic number from that. And that will just leave you with how many neutrons there are. So that should be a nice easy mark should it come up again on your exams. So we mentioned that word ion earlier on and said it was a charged particle. We do need to know how these ions form. And quite simply, they're going to form by the movement of electrons. They'll either be gained or lost from the atom. So if our atom is gaining electrons, then the ion that we make will have a negative charge because there'll be more electrons than protons. If, however, electrons are being lost from our atom, then our ion will have a positive charge because there'll be more protons than electrons. And the actual value of that charge, all you need to do is work out the difference between the protons and the electrons. But we'll be looking at that a little bit more in one of our later chemistry topics. So hopefully at the end of this video, you do know, obviously, those key terms that we use on the periodic table of atomic number and mass number, what they represent and how we can actually use them to work out the number of protons, electrons and neutrons that are present in any given element. And that you also know what an isotope is.